Moses knew the key thing of God being God, which is, show me your glory. I want to see your face. He never said, show me your hand. He said, show me your face. And the reason why I say he never says, show me your hand is because when you think of somebody's hand, it's pretty much how somebody gives you something. I told my wife, did you miss my hand or my face? And I related to the hand because your hand is what you do something for people. When somebody's going to give you something, you don't look at their hand. What do you look at? I mean, you don't look at their face. You look at their what? Because that's how they're going to give you something. I brought something back for my wife. She didn't stare at my face. <laughs> I gave her something out of my hand. And she saw what was in my hand. And she received it. But the church is too busy just looking at the hand. So I told her, I told my wife, did you miss me? My presence or what I do for you? We don't have to go into what she said. But Moses knew the difference between God's face and his presence and God's hand. And the last thing we are going to become or pray or do is become a people who are focused only on God's hand. But I will tell you one thing. That when you are engulfed and saturated in the presence of God, only one thing happens. His hand comes. And Moses was a man who did it the best. He said, show me your glory, God. He knew God would come every other way. But he was a man that always said, Lord, show me your glory. Show me your presence. Let me be a person who participates and not only watches. And I know that many people have created this false doctrine, and that's not what I want to do this morning. But I do want to distinguish something this morning to the church and teach you something. That there's a big difference from people who experience God firsthand and secondhand. Now let me explain myself. The people of Israel were blessed by God in a secondhand manner. It's not that they weren't blessed or they didn't receive from God because they did. But they weren't the ones who experienced God in a firsthand manner like Moses. I'm going to explain something to you this morning, and hopefully it gets my point across. Everybody knows Aaliyah here, and knows, I don't know what age she's going on to in her mind, but physically she's only four. <laughs> there was a time where, not a time, but maybe two weeks or a week before we left on, on the trip, that her uncle, Rico, asked her to do something. And um, it was something minimal, and... Um, when Rigo told her to do something, she looked at Rigo and said, um, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> she said, my daddy is the boss of me. So of course I found that humorous and awesome because she's <laughs> total disrespectful. But <laughs> Rigo called us and told us, do you know what your daughter is? <laughs> How many people are parents here? If you're a parent, raise your hand this morning. How many parents have more than one child? Raise your hand. Have you ever seen the difference between you telling your oldest son, go tell your brother that I say, <laughs> different than you going and telling the child, what to do? Have you noticed that? The siblings will fight and say, oh, dad didn't say that, and blah, 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 and da, da, da. Another example is maybe if you ever played that game telephone. Remember that game? That you stand in one place, you tell something to somebody, and they take it down the, the line, and by the time it's at the end, it's not even close to what the first person said. You know those people that are deceived with false doctrine and believing what man says before the Bible says? These are all people that are receiving things secondhand. <coughs> Amen. 
try to understand that. My daughter looked at Rigo and says, and recognized that if it comes from my dad, it's different. But if it comes from you, I'll question it. The church needs to recognize that I'm not your mouthpiece, always. And neither is the person next to you. Because we are not your daddy. The Bible says in the book of Romans that he is your daddy. And that you should cry unto him. Amen. And some of you are frustrated. And of course you're frustrated because you're not listening to your dad. There are times where I tell something to somebody and they get angry. Of course they're going to get angry. I'm not their daddy. If I tell them something, they can blow me off. They're receiving this stuff secondhand. But if they would just tune their ear to the Father and let the real boss speak to them, they would recognize that what I'm trying to tell them is true. But the church lives from afar. From afar. And there's a few people who are taking the trip up and down the mountain. And they're standing from afar watching them experience God's presence. And God is telling the church, I want you to have a first-hand experience with me, not a second-hand one. You're living your life of somebody else's glory, of somebody else's doctrine. Of course you're frustrated. You're not living life to the fullest. I believe, and I told my wife, I wrote her on an email as I was done. I told her, I've got to know God in another form. I wrote her in an email, I've seen a different side of him. And I can try to explain it to you, but you're just a second-hand experience. First, a person is experiencing second-hand. The 26 people who you can speak to or even see pictures of, it's not going to fulfill you in the way it should. Because it's going to be secondhand for you. And until you don't deny yourself, love righteousness and hate lawlessness, and you accept the long walk and tell the Lord, I'll go with you, I'll talk to you, and your fear gets out of the way, you'll never experience God firsthand. You'll experience Him from afar. I'm happy that the church from Broward is here today. Because I wanted uh, to share something with you this morning. Which is this. You yet to experience, wherever you are Broward, religiousness yet. You're still in a, in a situation where you love God with everything you have. One day you'll be stuck with religious hypocrites within the church. Maybe you might have them right now, but... Hopefully not yet. Love God with your whole entire heart. And be people that are first-hand experienced people. That experience God at hand. Moses can take as many trips as he wants. But you, until you don't tell Moses, I want to go up with you. And you don't go up the mountain, you're going to be frustrated. And there are people within the church who talk about God's presence, who talk about doctrine and know the Word of God, but that means absolutely nothing. Amen. Nothing. Show me somebody who lives in God's presence and acts in God's presence and you see God. Hallelujah. Everything else is religion. Amen. So I believe and I know that God is going to be doing great things in our midst. I'm ready to take a walk daily. And if God says, I want to talk to you, I'm going to jump out naked behind my bush and say, here I am. <laughs> if you understand that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the visitors this morning, I want to let you know that in the Bible. <laughs> Recognized he was 
was naked because he sinned. And God was playing hide and go seek with him. And um, he jumped out of the bush naked in the presence of God. <laughs> This morning I 